Action 52 on the Nintendo Entertainment System has gone down as one of those legendarily awful video games. It's one cartridge with 52 different games loaded onto it, and all the games are terrible. Some crash, some glitch, some don't have a fail condition, and like half the cart was 2D space shooters. Kind of like the OG Digital Homicide, come to think of it. And I do not have that game. It retailed for 200 bucks, and my NES barely works even with proper carts made by actual big boy companies inserted into it. But I do have Action 52 on the Sega Genesis. The Genesis version of Action 52 not only has a different developer and a more advanced console to work with, it was also released two years after the NES version. I think. Wikipedia lists the release dates as two years apart, but Wikipedia also says that they were showing demos of the original two years after it released. Who the fuck cares? With all those advantages, plus the urgent need to rise well above and redeem an abysmal original game, is Action 52 on the Genesis actually decent, or maybe even good? There's only one way to find out, and that way is to marathon all 52 games. Game 1! Bonkers! This is kind of a bizarre take on Breakout. You play as a ball that bounces up and down and you can move to either side. The object is to clear all the blocks by hitting them while your ball matches the block's color. It's a really slow and uninteresting puzzle game, up until you realize that it's unwinnable. See, your ball starts out green, and there are a ton of green bricks that you need to break, but if you touch one of the paintbrush blocks and change your ball's color, there is no way to change it back to green. You have to deliberately get killed and lose a life if you want to finish the stage, and there are no continues in any of these games. Let's nip that in the bud now. Run out of lives and it kicks you back to the title screen. And even if you work around the color issue, already in level 3 they get dickish and put you into insanely confined spaces with death blocks you'll constantly hit on accident. Accident. So you play this for a few minutes, and that's all you get. Three. Off to a great start, aren't we? Oh, and there's a picture of a sarcophagus in space because the Kool-Aid Man is red. Game 2! Dark Sign! You play as a little jet that has to fly around shooting turrets on the walls. It's a physics puzzle thing where once you boost in a direction, you keep floating in that direction, and if you graze a wall once, you die. And having to screw around with insanely precise controls in an environment where breathing wrong kills you is not my idea of a good time. Besides, if an enemy does decide to shoot at you, you're pretty much dead for how long it takes to get your ass moving out of the way, so I never last too long. Game 3! Dino Tennis! This is a two-player only game, which there are actually quite a few of on this cart, about two dinosaurs playing tennis by smacking around a caveman. Funny, but kind of pointless, and useless to a guy who lives alone. And yes, one of the dinosaurs is a very distinctive shade of purple. I guess Barney gets sick of all that love and family crap and just needs to blow off some steam once in a while. Game 4! Ooze! This is a crappy side-scroller. You play as some dork with a gun walking through a place covered in green slime and dying everywhere that he goes. You don't drop very far without the fall killing you. You can't clear a lot of the jumps. Stuff that looks like it should be a platform isn't actually a platform, and stuff that shouldn't kill you does. These pistons should only be a hazard if you get squashed underneath them, but nobody told these developers because just grazing them from the side or touching them on their way up makes you disintegrate. This may as well be a puzzle game, you have to be so damn exact with your movements, even on just the first level, clearing the first screen, hell with it, and the hitboxes are so massive, I'm not sure it's even possible to get this key here. It's like they were taking inspiration from the NES Dragon's Lair. And if you think I'm being too hard or giving up too easily on this game, just take a look at this. Level one. The game regularly spawns you on top of an enemy, killing you the literal instant that you start. Brilliant! Game 5! Starball! This is a crappy pinball game where the ball often phases right through your paddles, and the board just seems specifically designed to throw your ball down the gap between paddles so that you have zero chance of saving it. It ain't no Sonic Spinball. The board is tiny and just has nothing on it when the appeal of a lot of pinball games is that they have secret areas and big high score bonuses to trigger if you're really skilled, but nothing on this board seems to do anything. Just slap a few bumpers down and call it pinball. Or more accurately, call it a bad game. Game 6! Sidewinder! 
Hey guys, look, it's not Afterburner, where you play as a jet with a bunch of ugly white pixels on its wings like they didn't finish photoshopping it properly. Shooting down enemy planes with no actual shooting animation and the strobing effect on the ground makes you feel like you're gonna have a seizure. Jokes aside, this isn't a bad flying game, it just has no depth to it. If this were a special stage in an actual game, like that shit awful Superman Genesis game, it'd be pretty neat. But by the time you kinda start having some fun with it, you hit level 4 where the missiles are too fast and too numerous to dodge, and the level seems to go on longer than normal just to make sure that you snuff it. Only a few minutes of entertainment for you, and now it's back to the bullshit. Game 7, Daytona! Wow, I'm getting serious flashbacks to the Woo's awful driving game, except the Woo game had music, and this plays out in nearly total silence. You die instantly if you scrape the sides of the track or another car, and since the track is so narrow and all the cars have much wider sprites when turning, passing people on curves is not really a thing. Luckily, once you pass a racer, they just kind of disappear into nothingness so you don't have to worry about getting hit from behind, because that was too hard to program. But unluckily, after a few tracks, the game bitches at you for not having enough money, and it's game over. Good! Saves me the trouble! Number 8, 15 Puzzle! This is a stupid ass, tedious, and annoying slider puzzle. With a time limit! You don't even get a picture for something pleasant to look at, it's just a grid of numbers. This was a total filler slot. I'd say they've already stopped trying, but trust me, that comes later. In any of the games, you can quit back to the main menu by pausing and pressing B and C, and whenever you quit or get a game over, it drops you all the way back at the title screen to make damn sure that you know your misery by its proper name. Game 9! Sketch! Oh look, it's a drawing app where you have a brush function and literally no other tools. Boy, that'd be neat if every computer in existence at the time didn't include the infinitely more versatile Microsoft Paint for free! No, really, I made this in Microsoft Paint, suck it. And darn it all, I can't save drawings. That means that I can't hold on to this masterpiece of an artwork for later. What a shame. Number 10, Star Duel. This is another two-player game where two ships from Dark Sign try to shoot each other. The controls are insanely slippery, but you can hit your target from pretty much any distance and there's no easy way to strafe, so I'm guessing matches are still pretty short. And if one player wins two rounds in a row, they get a spread fire, because why not handicap the player that's losing? Number 11, Big Guy Haunted Hill! Sorry, force of habit! This is another hideously slapdash side-scroller. The objective is to go around grabbing all the pink crystals while fighting the stock spooky monsters. You play as some guy whose only attack is to punch with no range, there are no items or weapons to help you out, you die in one hit to everything, and a lot of the monsters are immune to your punches because you can't duck or attack in the air. The thing that gets you killed non-stop though is that the screen doesn't scroll until you've almost hit the furthest most edges of what's viewable, so you'll constantly get cheap shots to death out of nowhere by surprise monsters, and even if you survive all this crap, level 2 starts spamming fireballs that insta-kill you from off-screen in a flash. And you know what the added kick in the nads is? There's a Haunted Hills game in the NES version, and in that one, YOU CAN SHOOT! I did encounter what I can only assume is a glitch that gave me 13 lives out of nowhere, but apart from that, you get no help. And if you have the patience to sit here meticulously memorizing every last level to avoid all the instant deaths, then I envy the amount of free time that you have. Number 12, Alfredo! You're a chef catching the noodles that leap out of the pasta bowl in the middle of the room, and no, you are not penalized for grabbing and reusing food that's been on the floor and has hairs and crap stuck to it and serving it back to customers. But for some reason, if you grab the tomatoes, meatballs, or orange noodles, those kill you. Because why not? I swear that every cheap-ass minigame compilation throws in some variation of this game. I always call it Fire from the Game & Watch, and it always sucks. Number 13, Cheetah Man! This one takes some explanation. Cheetah Man was meant to be the breakout star attraction of Action 52, a brand new franchise riding the coattails of the Ninja Turtles juggernaut with tie-in comics action figures telling the story of three karate fighting anthropomorphic cheetahs battling the mad schemes of the evil Dr. Morbus! 
Cheetah Men went absolutely nowhere. They got three shithole games that nobody played and were never heard from again. And of those three games, two were buried in abysmal compilation games, and the last was an unfinished beta that only saw the light of day because Steve swept the prototype carts from a warehouse. Now, at the risk of asking a stupid question, why not just make a dedicated Cheetah Man game? Why make a Cheetah Man game and then make 51 crappy filler games to bury it under and then price the compilation as ludicrously expensive so as to ensure that as few people know about your new series as possible? Is it because you couldn't make an actual decent Cheetah Man game and had to package it in with scam bullshit to sell them? Yeah, I'm going with that. The actual game is just Haunted House, but worse. You play as a cheetah man that punches stuff, you climb ladders to reach items that have to be collected, and you die constantly from the screen not scrolling until an enemy has already killed you. Just everywhere you go, you drop dead instantly, and the controls are extremely stiff. In none of these side scrollers can you attack while jumping. So it plays like ass, you die non-stop, you have no cool powers, the design is cheap as all hell, Remind me again why they thought a game with zero entertainment value was going to catch on as a major franchise. Now, if they only had a girl, Cheetah Man, I probably would have liked it. Number 14, Skirmish. In this two-player game, you set up armies of foot soldiers, tanks, jeeps, jets, and helicopters, and then take it in turns moving your pieces across the board. If two pieces touch, you go into an overhead combat encounter where both sides try to shoot the other to death, with different units having different amounts of health and stronger bullets. If a single one of your pieces reaches the enemy headquarters, you win. I can't speak to the balancing or gameplay since it's a multiplayer-only game, but it's an interesting setup with lots of potential for strategy. And also a lot of potential for cheapness given the simplicity of the game's win condition. And the controls are so sensitive that trying to dodge imaginary fire, I struggled to land hits on a stationary opponent. Despite some of the pieces being big ass artillery vehicles, none of the pieces have special weapons or missiles and shit. And the artillery can barely move by the way. If one player is better at the overhead combat than the other, it'd probably render most of the strategy moot. But you know what? Kudos for actually making a game that's at least halfway interesting. Now, if only they could have programmed any kind of AI to go along with it. Number 15, Depth Charge. You're a boat pooping bombs onto submarines. That really is all there is to it. And even by level 2, you have subs that stay near the top of the screen all the time and ram torpedoes up your ass before you have any hope of dodging them. Like, seriously, did anybody play test this? Oh, well, I got a prompt answer to my question because the title screen just crashed! Number 16, Mind's Eye. So I imagine one of the programmers was sitting around the office one day and he shouted out, Man, I love Minesweeper, but I hate how the game saves you a crap load of time by clearing all the empty spaces in an area at once for you. So he went about making a shitty knockoff of Minesweeper where you have to slowly drag your cursor around clicking every single last empty square in turn, wasting a ton of your time. I'm guessing said programmer also didn't know that Minesweepers with like metal detectors are an actual thing and thought that you were just telepathically sensing all the mines, and that's why it's called Mind's Eye. That guy was an idiot. Number 17, Alien Attack. I think you play as Captain America running through some space stations with a rifle shooting aliens. Again, the screen only scrolls when you're right up against the edge of the display, so no matter what I do, eventually an alien is just gonna pop out the side and kill me before I can react. Especially come level 3, when half the damn stage is blocked off by the foreground. What are the levels after this like? Do they just make you play blind? So run forward until you die. Marvelous. The only thing that makes this game stand out is that they actually bother to program different backgrounds for each level, like this one that seems to be set in hell. And trust me, by the end you'll appreciate this level of dedication. Oh, and Medusa is a Greek myth, not an alien! Know the difference! Number 18, Billy Bob. This is a gallery shooting game in the Old West, taking out rowdy cowboys before they can shoot you. It's not all that bad, mainly because all the enemies have massive hitboxes that make them really easy to shoot. Each level is the same, just with the enemy speeding up each round, and I'm pretty sure level 9, which only takes a few minutes to reach, is the kill screen where you just don't have time to sweep your cursor between the opposite sides of the screen where enemies hang out. Also, is it just me or does Billy Bob's gun look more like he's holding a soda bottle? Or like he's holding a big black dick! 
Number 19, Sharks! A slow, plodding 2D shooter where you're stuck on one screen murdering sharks with a harpoon gun, which is just disgusting from a nature perspective, and the sharks move so slowly that they're piss easy to avoid. They don't even actively attack you. You kill them for minding their own business! Which makes it funny when you do die and your character is immediately stripped down to a bare skeleton Raiders of the Lost Ark style. Between that and all the sharks exploding in gore when killed, this is a friggin' violent game for the Sega Genesis. Number 20, Knockout! This is a two-player boxing game. You don't have multiple punches or a block. All you can do is jump to the ceiling, throw basic jabs, and wonder why there aren't any health bars. Not exactly the thrilling multiplayer experience of Smash Brothers or the deep contest of skill of your Street Fighters and Mortal Kombats, is it? Number 21, Intruder! You're a guy running through a maze shooting, I don't know, dot matrix from Spaceballs? And all the walls are electrified with barely enough space to cram your avatar through, so if you don't have exact precision with the controls, or if a robot comes at you in a hall where you can't dodge or shoot them, you die a lot on accident. I did actually manage to beat the first level, only to find that the second level is literally the exact same layout, just with a few more robots. These lazy bastards only designed one stage, and they counted on you just not living long enough to notice! Number 22, Echo. It's crappy Simon. Except you know how in Simon you have one string of inputs to memorize at a time that gets gradually longer and longer so it feels like a test of skill and is more intuitive to the memory? Well, screw that age-old classic. The creators of Action 52 know how these games really work. First, you input random disconnected four-button commands one right after the other. Then level 2 has you inputting random 5 button commands one after the other, and then level 3 you get bored and shut off the game. Number 23, Freeway! It's Frogger with a doggo, crossing two streets to get balls and suckers and whatnot and bringing them back. It's kinda neat to play Frogger without being locked down to a grid for a change, but you see, frogs are small, round, centralized, easy to determine when they'll have collisions with trucks. Dogs, you have their tail and nose sticking way out their ends with crappy hit detection that gets you constantly killed on accident. And when you die, the dog gets smushed complete with guts and entrails! What sick bastard programmed this thing? I think we just figured out why Cheetah Men never went anywhere. Clearly, John Wick got a hold of this game and had... words for the developers. Number 24, Mousetrap! You're a mouse running around grabbing pieces of cheese while dodging a suspiciously high number of cats. The movie Cats didn't have this many cats in it. You move fast, but a few levels in, the cats get so fast that going for any piece of cheese near the edges of the screen means that you'll probably die before you can react. Oh sure, the dog becomes graphic roadkill. The mouse just gets flattened like it's a cartoon. Number 25, Ninja! This is a side-scrolling action game where you're a ninja battling other ninjas. At least until you realize that this is the only game where touching the enemies doesn't actually kill you, and you can just run to the right and win. Well, the ninja do prioritize stealth and secrecy over actual combat. Around level 6, you have to actually start dodging ninja stars that are being thrown up your pooper, so... Fine, run to the right and also jump every now and then. Number 26, Slalom! Your completely basic and stock 2D scrolling game, moving around dodging trees as you ski down a hill. At around level 5, the trees start coming up too fast to reliably dodge, because I'm starting to think that none of these games has an actual ending. Oh crap on toast, we're only halfway through this nightmare. So, here's something funny. When you boot up the Action 52 Genesis cartridge, you're presented with the standard opening Sega logo, and then it briefly flashes a warning that this is totally not an actual officially licensed Sega game, regardless of the logo that they just put on the screen. It's like a literal bright flashing red flag trying to ward you off from actually playing the game. But that's not the only information on this screen. Apparently the games on the main menu are color-coded. Blue games are multiplayer, yellow means expert, purple means medium, and green means beginner difficulty. So now, knowing about the color scheme that flashes before you have any chance to read it, I have a question. Why the hell are all the expert difficulty games listed first? Again, it's like they're trying to stop you from playing the game. Or at least it would be if these difficulty rankings weren't completely arbitrary, which they are. Pretty much every game is equally as unplayable as the last. 
If you were being generous, you could say that these games are striving for the classic arcade format where you play similar levels with an escalating difficulty curve and no actual ending, but each of these selections only lasts you a few minutes before you just run out of game. There's no depth to any of the experiences here. Eh, piss off, dork! We don't have time for game balancing! We're too busy mapping out the Cheetah Man Cinematic Universe! Alright, so in the fourth game, they'll fight Chester Cheetah. Number 27! Dauntless! It's a 2D shooter where you're flying a plane through clouds that completely obstruct your vision of whatever in the hell's going on. This honest to crap hurts my eyes, and I don't want to play it anymore! Number 28! Force 1! Another 2D shooter, only this time you're in space, blowing up a bunch of ships that don't shoot back. So you're firing at unarmed cargo vessels whose only recourse is to try to ram you in desperation? The only gimmick here is that small red ships can't die and stick around to try and ram you continuously. So again, annoying the piss out of you is the only gimmick they could think of! Number 29! Spidey! Oh, come on! This is just the rat game again, only instead of grabbing cheese and dodging cats, you're grabbing flies and dodging spiders! Just past the halfway point and they're already completely out of ideas? Number 30! Appleseed! You're a guy catching apples. Doesn't matter how many you let fall, the only thing that kills you is catching a green apple. Because this guy hates Granny Smiths? Can't he just scoop the apples up off the floor? They all need to be washed anyway. This has got to be the most pointless game on the cartridge. Number 31, Skater. Side scroller, where you're a kid skating down a road dodging pinwheels and dead cats. Seriously, what the hell is with all the animal cruelty in this game? Where did all these dead cats come from? Did a Chinese restaurant explode? Also, you can jump like a mile in the air and automatically dodge anything that could possibly be a threat. Fun fact, you're supposed to grab these boom boxes in the road to complete each level, but I thought that those were cinder blocks you needed to avoid. So I just sat at the bottom of the screen, barely touching the controller for like 10 minutes, wondering why the level wasn't ending. Forgive me for assuming that they just forgot to program a game here. At this point, would it have been surprising? Number 32, Sunday Drive! Hey look guys, it's Road Fighter, that crappy scrolling driving game that re res sees on pretty much every preloaded knockoff console because it's notoriously easy to copy and reuse. You're just driving through traffic with controls too stiff to survive past a few levels. That's it. Oh look, Segaville, next exit. On sign, after sign, after sign. Which, technically still true if there's never an exit. Number 33, Star Evil! It's another 2D shooter, only this time you're a space fighter blasting through a shipyard. Around level 5 I realized this game just takes one brief stretch of level, maybe 5 screens in length, and just copies and pastes it over and over and over again. There are no bonus weapons, there are no special enemies, there are no bosses, you just fly through the same one room over and over, and apparently that's the game now! Number 34, Air Command! Another 2D shooter! This time you're a lard-ass plane that's way too wide to dodge enemies, and again, no alternative weapons or bosses or anything to make it like an actual video game! For a cart that seems to be going for arcade experiences, how are you consistently getting your ass kicked by Galaga? Number 35, Shootout! Another 2D shooter! This time at a target range, reusing the arm sprite from Billy Bob, right down to having the same Damn! Only now you're trying to shoot all the targets on scrolling lanes before you run out of bullets. There is no bonus for hitting targets from further away, so you might as well just wait for them to reach the bottom lane and scroll right in front of you to maximize your chance of hitting things. And already, after just playing for a few minutes, the game starts only giving you one extra bullet to clear stages, if that. So again, broken game! Number 36, Bombs Away! 2D scroller where you're a guy running away from bombs and half the time you're obscured by barns in the foreground. It quickly becomes too fast to be playable. And what funky ass bombs are they dropping starting at level 3? Did they run out of bombs and start chucking sacks of potatoes at you? Number 37, Speedboat! Another 2D scroller game dodging obstacles, this time a boat moving too slowly for the game to function. Number 38, Dead Ant! 
ANOTHER 2D shooter! You're an ant shooting at other insects. The only gimmick this game has is Black Widow spiders that can't be killed, and already on the second level there are like seven of the bastards pestering you non-stop! Newsflash! Sucking balls is not a selling point! You're not Bubsy! Number 39! G-Fighter! ANOTHER 2D shooter! Where you're fighting off ships in space, and the enemy bullets travel so fast from off-screen, you'll rarely be able to react to being shot at. Number 40! Man at Arms! ANOTHER 2D shooter! This time you're an archer atop a castle shooting soldiers, only this one has a major design flaw. If two enemies spawn right in front of one another, the first one's corpse will block you from shooting the second one. And already by level 4 the game starts spawning enemies on polar opposite sides of the board so that you can't reach them all in time and it becomes unplayable. Also I don't know why they start throwing in special werewolf enemies in level 3 when they just move at the same speed and still die in one hit. <sighs> what did I just play? About 12 near identical games in a row that all boil down to move side to side dodging shit? It feels like there's next to no friggin' variety on this cartridge, and the little variety that exists, you don't want to play! So damn many of these games are completely interchangeable. What is the point of making 52 games if you're going to completely run out of ideas like halfway through and just pad the card out with garbage? None of these have power-ups or items. Pretty much none of the enemies do anything but travel in a straight line. Atari games have more depth and complexity. Hell, most of these games even only use one button. I know you can plug an Atari 2600 controller into a Genesis, but that's not a design requirement. Y'all didn't have anything to spice up the cart. No sports, no falling block puzzle games, no fighting games with an actual AI. Oh, right. Too stupid to program AI. That's my bad. But still, it's not like Action 52 was such a recognizable brand that you absolutely needed to get to 52 games, regardless of how many suck. That turn-based strategy thing was cool, you think of maybe making a whole game out of that? Maybe compress all the 2D shooters down into one that's decent? No? Okay. Number 41! Norman! A top-down shooter game where you're a tank trying to chase down fast, tiny little soldiers and dying to everything in one hit. Yeah, I can get another tank killing me in one hit, but touching a guy on foot? Why even have this slow, clunky, stupid-ass tank in the first place? Number 42! Armor Battle! It's Norman again, only with two players. And for some reason, each round the tank starts shooting off-center in a random direction, but only if you're pointed horizontally. This is basically the combat sections from Skirmish, only with one vehicle apiece. When I said to expand on that one promising game, I didn't mean cut out one tiny piece of it to shill as a separate game! Number 43, Magic Bean! Another damn 2D scrolling game where you're dodging shit dropping down on you. This is exactly the same as the speedboat game, only this time a full two-thirds of the screen are blocked off to where you can't cross them, yet they still have items being thrown down them for literally no reason. Because programming is hard. Number 44, Apache! Oh boy, another 2D shooter! Only this time it took me forever to figure out these little random gray squares on the ground kill you instantly if you touch them! Even though you should be flying like miles above them! And trying to figure out why you keep dying out of nowhere is pretty much the only actual mechanic this game has. Number 45! Paratrooper! You're running around a maze grabbing boxes, only you move really slowly and the hitboxes feel like you get hung up on the walls non-stop. And also there are robots that just spawn at random and kill you if you need to go near the edge of the screen because why the hell not? Number 46! Sky Avenger! Oh wait, wait, don't tell me, I know this one! 2D Shooter! Oh come on, are you serious with this shit?! Recycle the levels from Bombs Away, then reskin all the stuff from G-Fighter because it plays exactly the same and BAM! You got a new game. Number 47, Sharpshooter! Another 2D shooter on a gallery with bunnies, frogs, and... I don't know what that is. 
think the lack of ideas was leading to sleep deprivation and hallucinations, and they just started drawing down the cracked out shit they were seeing. And somehow the flat cardboard cutouts used for target practice kill you if they reach you, because the very last shit that was given on this cartridge dropped about 30 games ago. Number 48! Meteor! <sighs> it's another melon farming 2D shooter! This time you're a ship shooting falling meteors so they don't hit a city. Except actually programming real video games is just hard. So the game doesn't actually care if any meteors crash into the buildings you're supposed to be guarding and murder thousands of people. You just need to eventually shoot enough to finish the level. This is like the only game where holding the fire button actually makes you shoot continuously. So the game is pretty easy. So easy, in fact, that guess what? I actually beat this game! Yes, it turns out that Action 52 Genesis games can in fact be beaten and have actual endings. You wanna know what happens? After finishing nine levels, the game just cuts off. That's it. No bosses, no end screen, the game just ends. Well crap, if the games end after nine levels, then I came super close to beating a few more of these! Damn it! Number 49, Black Hole! Another 2D shooter, but this one the camera zooms in to where you can't see Jack, and I think this is supposed to be like a really lame-ass attempt at a rail shooter with the scrolling. I just don't get it. Number 50, The Boss! Oh, ho, 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 shit! A game that they actually tried out. <clears throat> okay. This one, you're an alligator running around grabbing cash while dodging and shooting gangsters with a Tommy gun. Except the controls are insanely finicky to where you can only actually get onto the ladders if the game feels like it. So the game that they actually tried on is even less playable than normal. And if someone could explain just what in the hell killed me here, I would really appreciate it. Just what the hell? Number 51! First game! It's Pong. It's two-player Pong with no flourishes, graphical updates, or other mechanics. And rather embarrassingly, it has vastly more depth and strategy than pretty much all the other games here. Okay, it's kind of embarrassing that a completely unoccupied controller scored on me. Number 52! Challenge! We close out this crap with what may well be the single worst game on the cartridge. I'm not kidding. See, Challenge is not actually a game. It randomly loads up the final stage of all the other single player games for you to marathon one after another until you die. Oh look, the ninth level of Intruder is literally the exact same as the first and second levels. What a shock. If you can beat the gauntlet and clear the final stage of every single game in one sitting, you are crowned the Action Game Master! Trouble is, even if you can stomach playing all 40 some odd single player games in a row, I'm pretty sure the challenge is impossible. See, it turns out that Man at Arms' final level is actually pretty easy because most of the enemies just run diagonally off the stage and aren't a threat to you. I'm finding it increasingly hard to believe that this thing was tested, so I actually cleared the first part of the challenge only for the cart to then crash two seconds into Star Evil. I don't know if Star Evil tries to run too fast for the cartridge to handle, or if changing games is just beyond the cart's hardware capabilities. There may be a reason the game loads back at the title screen after every game over, but either way, I think we're done here. Now we kicked off this marathon with one simple question. Is Action 52 on the Genesis a good, or I'll settle for decent game? Most of the cartridge is completely interchangeable 2D scroller games. The few platformers are so badly designed and coded as to be nearly impossible to play. None of the games last you longer than a few minutes or have any depth or intricacy to them. The games are all so dirt basic the vast bulk could function on an Atari 2600. The graphics don't look that much better for being 16-bit. The few games that are almost mildly entertaining are abysmal knockoffs of actual games. Some of the games were clearly designed by a psychopath for all the animal violence that's present. Crappy controls, crappy weapons, crappy scrolling mechanics, crappy coding that makes the big final challenge laughably impossible. 
just so much laziness crammed into one package. It's better than the NES release. That's not something to brag about. How do you change developers, move to an advanced system, and allegedly have two years to learn from the original and end up with something that's only barely improved? It just doesn't compute. You probably won't be surprised to learn that Active Enterprises, the company behind this series, didn't make anything else after the Genesis version. A Super Nintendo version was planned to complete the trilogy of awful, but it was abandoned. Speculation is it's because they couldn't figure out how to get around the console's lockout chip. But there have been a few attempts by, eh, fans to remake this utter shit pile into something at least playable. There was a thing called Action 52 Owns back in 2010 that seems to have been abandoned halfway through development, and there was Action 52 Revisited, which I can't find literally any information on it except for some intro cutscenes. I guess it's kind of fitting that these fan remakes don't seem to cross the finish line and just leave this embarrassment as the utter failure of gaming that it is. Level complete.